two and a half inch four flitch was light years better. Hey guys, welcome back to another Moel video. Today we're going to be building Gold Tips Hunter XT 340 arrows. If you guys aren't already rocking Gold Tips arrows, I highly recommend it. I've been using these things since I first started archery hunting, which is about six years now, four years now. And I've killed several different animals with these arrows, and not once have they failed me. We're going to be pairing them up with some exact archery four blade broadheads, AAE max veins. I think these things have a great reputation. I know a lot of professional bow hunters and archers use these. One other cool thing to note in this video, we're going to be bringing on Tim Gillingham to talk about why it's important to four-fletch your arrows when you're using fi fixed blade broadhead. He's kind of pioneered the four-fletch, four so we're going to get to talk to him about that and see what he has to say. I think it's going to be a super cool conversation. You're going to want to stick around for that at the end. We're going to also be pairing him up with some Boeing 4-inch arrow wraps, the 1.66 knot collar, the 1.66 GT Knox from Gold Tip. These things are going to be white. They're going to be visible. You're going to be able to see them fly. That's why I'm excited about them. See you guys in the shop. Let's get these things cut up and ready to go. All right, so basically what I got going on here is I built myself a little fletching jig. Or not fletching jig, a little cutting jig. So I put my arrow in here, and then I made a, a backer so I could push my arrow in there cut it and they'll all be the same length and then I'll touch up on them with the sander a little tiny bit just to get them just to get them square. I think the edges turned out nice and square. So, first thing we're gonna start with, we're gonna start with the arrow wraps, then we're gonna do the fletchings, then we're gonna do the knock collars, and then we'll put the GT knocks in the knock collars. Lastly, we're gonna put in our inserts. If you guys wanna try and replicate this build at home, I'm gonna be putting all the links to every single component in this archery build in the description box below. And there's gonna be some discount codes popping up somewhere in here. All right, so I got everything prepped out. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my arrow wrap off the thing and lay it on the table. I'm gonna have the Boeing logo like this on the arrow. So it's gonna be pointing up. I'm gonna lay it on the table. Now you just take your arrow. Try to get it perfect. Boom, just like that. Arrow wraps on there. I'd say it turned out pretty good. Now we gotta do 11 more. <laughs> Then we're moving on to the next step. It's the last one right here. Line up the edge. Make sure it's flush. Boom. Roll it out. And boom.
just like that we have all of our arrows done now that our arrows are all wrapped and ready to go we can throw on our accu bushings dump a couple out just take one of these guys and just goes right in the tip i think that looks pretty sleek right there so that is what it looks like after you get the knock fully seated in the bushing. It looks pretty sleek. They're pretty little. Okay, so I went ahead and installed all my bushings. Now it's time to start putting the knocks in. Those look like that. So I've got my AAE Max veins. These are the stealths. I got a 50 pack. Go ahead and throw one in my jig. Just dot it. Here we go. Here's the first fletching. I'm just gonna push hard. Pull that off of there. I got glue on everything but the, the fletchings. I mean, look, it's hard to see on camera, but I got glue everywhere. I guess that's all, that's all part of the deal. <laughs> so, we're gonna wait for this thing to glue up. But yeah, it's the last arrow out of the batch. Thing wiped off. Here are the others. Now let's slap the inserts in. I got my first broadhead lined up. I'm gonna pull it out, slap some glue on it, push it back in, and make sure it's lined up. And yeah, that's my process for trying to keep these even and straight. Alrighty, I'm finishing up my last arrow. This will complete my 2024 big game hunting arrow. Boom, just like that. but we'll give him one anyway from Provo, Utah. Two-time classic champion, current defending champion, Tim Gillingham. <laughs> Shooting for Matthews, Tim Gillingham. Old Tip Arrow Company, and Tim is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to arrows, tuning bows. Uh, he's tested everything imaginable. He's tested every type of release imaginable. Wins Shooter of the Year. Congratulations, Tim. Tim the Hammer Gillingham. How you doing? Well, not too bad. Good, good. I appreciate you coming on today. Not a problem. You're Tim Gillingham. You work for Gold Tip. You're a professional archer. What else can you tell me about yourself? 
Well, I've been at this pretty religiously for about 40 years. So ever since I was uh, somewhere around 14, and I've been working at Gold Tip here for 22 years. Okay. I shoot archery at a very high professional level, but I also have bow hunted all over the, the world. What are the type of competitions you're competing in? At what level are they? I have I, I compete at the highest professional level. I'm I'm now a senior pro. I'm over fifty, so that just means I'm smarter and not as good. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> still body's starting to get wore down a little bit. But uh, just come off indoor nationals, headed to ASA on Wednesday. So I won the first ASA term of the year, and and you know an ASA style competition. We run big big fat arrows. So that's cool. You know they kind of act like fixed blades too so they tend to you know everybody asks me well, what the perfect vein is and my first question to him is what are you trying to steer right so it's 100 percent relative to what you are trying to control i talked to you on the phone about a month ago and i told you i was doing an arrow build i have xt340 gold tip arrows mm -hmm. and i was contemplating on whether or not i should do a three fletch or a four fletched arrow and without yeah. hesitation, you're like four fletched because I told you I was going to use a fixed blade broadhead. What what was your main reasoning behind that? Why, why did you push for that? You know, if there was ever anything that was so stark and um, compelling, it was when we were shooting fixed blade broadhead and doing testing with that. I was Grim Reaper is like a mile from my house. So we were there over here one day and I used to hunt Idaho where I had to shoot fixed blades. And we were doing some testing and I was trying to get my setup ready. And we were just trying to figure out what made broadheads fall like field points. Well, first of all, none of them do, but, um, but right. that being said, you know, I was struggling a little bit at some point, every broadhead I had planed off and hit in the dirt. And I think we were shooting about 90 yards, 80 or 90 yards. But uh, at some point, everything I was shooting planed off and hit in the dirt. And so I just got the idea that I would go get these arrows up that I built for ESPN Great Outdoor Games, which were some 22 series, some old old 22 series that were a little heavier. And I had them four fletched with a two and a half inch vein. And it went from planing off and hitting the dirt to I can't miss it. I probably can't miss a six inch group. And it just, it was crazy and compelling the difference. And I've seen the same thing kind of, you know, in my experimentations with, you know, these like triple X arrows that I shoot competition with, you know, it's, uh -huh. it's got, it's got a lot of surface area. And so therefore when you make a mistake, you know, it presents this, you know, fat point to the airflow and it wants to plane off. If you take a fat shaft, I guess the best example of that is if you go out and shoot a, a skinny arrow like this, uh, like this Pierce here, uh -huh. as a bare shaft at 50 yards. And then you go shoot this fat triple X as a bare shaft. You'll be lucky to hit the target with the fat arrow, and the skinnier arrow will will actually resist some of those mistakes in that planing because there's basically less airflow or less surface area to want to create a shear force to on that shaft. So, you know, again, it goes down to what am I trying to steer? Okay. So and if someone if someone came up to you and asked you in the field, like you're at just a convention or something, and they're telling you. I got a fixed blade broadhead and I'm running two inch veins and I'm running a three fletch. What is, if you had to tell them one thing, why you should switch to floor fletch, what, what would you tell them? Well, basically it'd just be more forgiving. Okay. And yeah. you can actually usually go down a little bit in your vein size when you go to four fletch. I, I caution people a lot, you know, in, in tournament archery too, to not necessarily just follow the best shooters because you got to understand the best shooters make more consistent shots. Okay. They don't, their form is so good that they might not be able to tell the difference between three and four of these veins. Whereas if you're an amateur shooter and you don't make as good of consistent shots, you're going to definitely see an, you know, an improvement, you know, in your forgiveness by going to, to, to four veins. So if you go to a high profile vein, like a blazer versus something like this three inch, you know, this bank holds its stiffness quite a bit better, so it's going to create less noise. So you get more control and less noise. So that's what we're trying to do with a hunting vane. Um, you can get away with, you know, and, and back to that test where we were shooting 90 yards, I was shooting a four-inch hard helical three-fletch, okay? So it's not like I wasn't shooting a lot of surface area, but that two-and-a-half-inch four-fletch was light years better, okay? And yeah. you really just got to get out and experiment for yourself, 
um, to be able to find out where that threshold lies. You know, if you started, you know, if you started overkill and then you back down from overkill and you do this at your longest distance you're going to be shooting, then you'll be able to assess, you know, where that minimum threshold lies, you know, because you want to shoot the minimum amount of vein up to the point we're losing something because you're going to create more drag. It's going to slow down faster. The wind's going to be able to affect it more. But also that one of the big things that I look at on a hunting arrow is how much noise am I creating? But I can kind of go over and look at some of these arrows. Sure. You know, like this was my hunting arrow. So this is a, a 246 ID. This is our force arrow. It's kind of like an XT hunter, like you're shooting. Okay. The smaller mechanical, I would shoot this two. This is a 2.1 fusion X2. So a smaller mechanical, I would definitely, that's kind of my go-to. You know, for the thorns like this, where you're steering nothing, right? You know, something a little bit smaller. Okay. Yeah. If I was shooting fixed blades like you do, I would probably mm -hmm. lean more towards this. This is a two and a half to three inch shield cut four fletch. Yeah. So I got I got some AAE Max veins on mine. Mm -hmm. I, got the, I got the knock collar. I don't have the um, broadheads in right now. That's but. fine. That ought to work with the majority of broadheads, fixed blade broadheads on the market. Yeah. So, you know, speed, speed is a thing too. So, if you're shooting fixed plays really fast, it's kind of like I always use the analogy if you're driving down the, the road and you stick your hand out the window like this, okay, and you're doing 30 mile an hour, you can move it around without it taking off, right? Right. Then you do, do it at 90 mile an hour. Now, all of a sudden, right. off. You, you, you know, that's, you know, that's the analogy of why you don't want to run fixed plays too fast. As you start wanting to push distance, you know, fixed blades start to become ugly. You know, I can shoot them like this at 100 yards as long as the wind's not blowing. Yeah. But the wind blows, where they're going to hit is very, very much more difficult to, to uh, figure out. Mm -hmm. If you make a mistake in your shot, or, you know, a lot of times, in, you know, when we're hunting, we don't make that same perfect backyard shot that we do standing there. And so that's where the fletching is going to really come into play. Um, you just got to, you got to limit your distances a lot more when you're shooting fixed blades. So yeah. you gotta be a little more careful. For sure. Well, thank you, Tim. I appreciate your time. We'll definitely have to catch up again here soon. Sure. Yeah. If you have any questions, you know, let me know. Thank you. All right, Tim. You have a good rest of your day. We'll see ya. See ya.